Hello again, folks. You've probably, at one time or another, seen a lung demonstration model like this one. The balloon represents a lung, or maybe a single alveolus, depending upon how you're thinking about it at the time. The clear plastic jar represents the thoracic wall, and the rubber sheet at the bottom represents the diaphragm. Pull down on the diaphragm, the volume of the thoracic cavity increases a little bit, and the lung expands a little bit. The whole thing is lying on its side, so superior is that direction, and inferior is that direction. Let's add some fancy scientific words, though keep in mind that different textbook authors might prefer slightly different terms. The space inside the balloon is the pulmonary space. The space between the balloon and the clear plastic is the pleural space. In real life, the outside of the balloon would be covered by the visceral pleura, and the inside of the plastic jar would be covered by the parietal pleura, with a few milliliters of pleural fluid in between. One more fancy word, the stretchiness of the balloon is the lung compliance. In that first fairly low quality video, there was one atmosphere of pressure in the pulmonary space and one atmosphere of pressure in the pleural space. When the diaphragm is relaxed, the balloon is lying limply on the bottom of the jar because the pressure is the same inside and out. When I pulled the diaphragm inferiorly, the volume inside the thoracic cavity increases, and our old friend Boyle's Law is going to insist that the pressure inside the thoracic cavity decreases. Air moves from the outside to the inside because there's a lower pressure on the inside. Until we get to an equilibrium between the pulmonary pressure and the lung compliance. And if we had to, we could probably do that arithmetic. Well, but... Actually, there is air in the pulmonary space and air in the pleural space. We have air in both spaces. We have to consider the outside air pressure, the pulmonary pressure, the pleural pressure, the stretchiness of the balloon, the stretchiness of the diaphragm, and the change in volume in order to calculate that equilibrium. We're definitely not going to do that. The air in the pleural space is a problem, though, because air is a compressible fluid. A liter of air is only a liter of air at a particular combination of pressure and temperature. Our old friend Pivner. Well then, let's fill the pleural space with water, because water is an incompressible fluid. A liter of water is always a liter of water, as long as it's liquid water. Ask anyone who has ever somehow gotten liquid water into a cylinder of their car's engine, they will tell you that water does not compress, even when you squeeze it with a 500 horsepower engine. The steel connecting rod, however, is going to bend. Filling the pleural space with water required some modifications to the lung demonstrator model that I started with. There's that great big hose clamp helping to support the diaphragm, and a 1 16th inch thick layer of neoprene under the clamp to keep the sharp edges from shredding the diaphragm. I also added valves and tubes and stuff to the superior end of the model so that I could remove all of the air and some of the water from the pleural space. In real life, there's only a few milliliters of pleural fluid around each lung. Here, I still have more than a liter of water in the pleural space because that's all I could squeeze out by hand. But even with more than a liter of water in the pleural space, notice how the lung is already larger than it was in the first video segment, even with the diaphragm relaxed. I can make the lung any size I want as long as I can remove the corresponding amount of water from the pleural space. And remember how we need surfactant inside the alveoli because of the surface tension of water? Water molecules like to stick to each other through hydrogen bonds, so without surfactant, the alveoli, if they collapse, will stay collapsed. The fancy word for that is atelectasis. Also notice how when there's an incompressible fluid in the pleural space, the diaphragm now domes up into the thoracic cavity. Or in other words, the diaphragm is now diaphragm-shaped. So what happens when I pull down on the diaphragm now? Well then, that's much better. The one liter of water is still one liter of water. 
all of the change in thoracic volume that we got when the diaphragm contracted is now the change in the volume of the pulmonary space, minus a little bit for lung compliance. One more question. What happens if a mixture of air and water is in the pleural space? That's called pneumothorax. Pneumothorax is bad. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you later.